Okay, good afternoon to all of you. First, uh, on behalf of Centre of Bank SDs of Central Bank of Sri Lanka, let me have the pleasure of inviting, uh, welcoming all of you uh, for this public seminar in which we can discuss the state of economy, challenges and outlook as reflected in the Central Bank Annual Report 2022. Let me now recognize the dignitaries at the head table. Dr. Nandalal Veera Singha, Governor of Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Mrs. Yvette Fernandu, Senior Deputy Governor of Central Bank of Sri Lanka. And our speaker today, Dr. PKG Harish Chandra, Director of Economic Research Department of Central Bank of Sri Lanka. We welcome all of you with great honor. Apparently today's uh, webinar is being attended by an audience comprising uh, both in person and virtual audience uh, who will be joining with us uh, via Facebook and YouTube. So today's lecture will be followed by a Q&A session in which you can direct your questions to the esteemed panel uh, at the head table today. Having explained the format of today's seminar, let me now introduce our speaker, Dr. Harish Chandra, to you. Dr. PKG Harish Chandra works as Director of Economic Research Department of Central Bank of Sri Lanka. He's a member of the Monetary Policy Committee of Central Bank. Further, Dr. Harish Chandra works as Chair of the Research Advisory Committee of the Economic Research Department and as Editor of Staff Studies Journal of the Central Bank. Previously, he has worked as Additional Director General of Fiscal Policy, um, Fiscal Policy Department and Director of Economic Research of the Ministry of Finance on second one basis from the Central Bank and also represented the General Treasury at the University Grants Commission. He has published research articles in international and local journals on the areas monetary policy, inflation persistence, exchange rate regimes, business cycles, financial system stability indicators, and has authored articles for local periodicals on various themes. Dr. Harishandra has obtained a PhD and an MSc in economics from the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom and an MBA from the University of Colombo, Sri Lanka, and also a Bachelor of Commerce, first class degree uh, from the University of Kalania, Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. P.K. Jiharishandra, Director of Economic Research of Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Thank you uh, <clears throat> very much, Kushan, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon to you all. Um, um, this is the um, 73rd uh, annual report uh, uh, um, of the monetary board. And this is uh, a fulfilling uh, requirement of the uh, monetary law act, uh, which the section 35 uh, says the monetary board will submit uh, to the Minister of Finance uh, and publish an annual report uh, within four months after each uh, financial year um, containing the uh, condition of the central bank and a review of the policies and measures adopted by the monetary board uh, during the financial year and an analysis of the uh, economic and financial circumstances which prompted uh, those policies and, and measures. So in today's presentation, what I will do is to uh, touch upon the uh, economic developments in brief and the background to the policies and measures uh, implemented by the monetary board and the government uh, and the outcome of those policies. So as you uh, are very well aware by now that the Sri Lankan economy encountered uh, its most uh, onerous uh, year in its uh, post-independence uh, history uh, last year. Uh, so therefore, uh, a rapidly uh, deteriorating economic uh, conditions warranted uh, immediate and coordinated policy initiatives to preempt a further worsening of the situation. Uh, the corrective uh, measures uh, affected the vast uh, citizenry uh, in the near term, but they were necessary uh, to safeguard the economy and people from 
potentially devastating consequences of unrestrained economic instability. The expected outcomes of these uh, efforts uh, have begun to materialize uh, since late uh, last year, thereby helping to restore uh, socioeconomic uh, stability. And nevertheless, challenges remain in uh, ensuring uh, stability on a, a sustained basis. So let me, in brief, uh, touch upon the developments uh, last year, uh, starting with the real sector, as we uh, all are well aware, uh, economy contracted by 7.8% last year, recording the deepest uh, contraction. And that contraction was reflected in all sectors of the economy. Services sector contracted by 2%, uh, industry sector contracted by 16%, and agriculture sector contracted by 4.6%. Um, Therefore, the economy uh, contracted uh, in nominal terms as well, uh, in GDP terms. Uh, the economy was recorded at 77 um, billion US dollars, uh, declined from 88 billion US dollars in 2021. So uh, the per capita GDP also fell from 3,997 US dollars to 3,470. For US dollars. On the inflation front, uh, again inflation uh, reached a historic high at 69.8% uh, in September last year. That was due to uh, uh, multiple factors, including the depreciation of the currency, supply shortages, uh, large monetary financing, and global uh, energy and food inflation as well. So, headline inflation uh, recorded at 69.8%. Uh, September last year, core inflation also uh, increased to 50.2%. Uh, Food inflation in particular accelerated to 95%, and non-food inflation also uh, accelerated to 57.6%, which resulted in some form of de-anchoring of uh, inflation expectations, which required urgent measures to rectify the situation. On the external front, we uh, have witnessed uh, significant uh, balance of payment pressures last year. The forest liquidity dried, causing shortages of fashion cells. If, you, if I to share with some indicators of uh, uh, balance of payments, the workers' remittances, for instance, fell to uh, just over 200 million in February last year, compared to over half a billion on average monthly workers' remittances in the pre-crisis uh, years. And the trade deficit uh, widened uh, to 1.1 billion in December uh, 2021. And during the first uh, four months of last year, the trade deficit uh, remained high at around $780 million. Uh, earnings from tourism fell to $41 million uh, in September, compared to a pre-crisis uh, monthly average of uh, around $400 million tourism earnings. Usable reserves. Uh, fell to uh, critically low levels of about $20 uh, million in April last year, and the overall reserves fell to $1.7 billion um, in October last year. And uh, foreign currency debt servicing soared uh, compared to 2021, which was about $6.8 billion foreign currency debt servicing. We were to service about $7.6 billion dollars foreign currency debt in uh, 2022, but uh, due to this uh, depletion of reserves and the lack of access for the government to uh, mobilize funds from foreign sources, the uh, government actually announced a standstill in April. Therefore, uh, the, uh, compared to Q1 debt servicing of $2.5 billion, the remaining three quarters had only about $0.7 billion uh, dollars worth of uh, foreign currency debt servicing. So the pressures on the exchange rate mounted, which warranted some measured adjustment by the monetary board in um, early March uh, last year. But however, the market speculation caused a large overshooting, which resulted in a 44% depreciation during uh, early March to early May last year. Um, on the uh, energy sector, we saw uh, heightened vulnerabilities uh, because of lack of uh, fuel uh, and the other raw material. 
So the daily scheduled power cuts started in February uh, last year, and the power cuts were extended to over 10 hours a day during April, and we saw large uh, queues for fuel because of uh, inconsistency in uh, fuel distribution and the uncertainty in the uh, availability of uh, fuel. On the fiscal sector, the government revenue fell to 8.7 percent, that is the, one of the lowest in the world, but the government expenditure remained rigid, uh, around 18.5 percent. Overall fiscal deficit uh, increased to 10.2 percent, that is the third highest uh, fiscal deficit in 20 years, and the government debt soared to 113.8 percent of GDP, that is uh, sort of unsustainable level of government debt in terms of uh, the gross financing need of the government and the servicing ability of the government. So the, uh, we saw the sovereign credit ratings uh, were, um, from January last year, were being downgraded, and that trend got intensified um, in the second half of 2021 through early 2022, hence uh, constraining the access uh, uh, for foreign financing by the government. On the monetary sector, the performance uh, reflected the impact of the crisis and the uh, impact of the corrective measures uh, that were taken. The monetary financing increased. Uh, in 2021, 1.2 trillion of monetary financing happened. And last year, monetary financing was 1.3 trillion. And credit to the private sector continued to contract uh, consecutively from June uh, last year onwards. So from June to February this year, credit to the private sector contracted by about half a trillion rupees. Net foreign assets of the central bank turned negative and recorded at lowest levels. By end of last year, NFA or net foreign assets of the central bank was recorded at 1.6 trillion rupees, which was about 4.4 billion US dollars. And the interest, rate, interest rates soared. The prime lending rate reached uh, historic high at 29.7% in November last year. And the government securities yields increased to an extraordinary high level of 33.1%, so that the government securities yields were actually above the other market interest rates during uh, last year. Financial system weathered uh, headwinds from the most profound economic crisis since uh, independence. I'll share some indicators of the banking sector, which uh, faced uh, looming challenges arising from continuously declining credit quality, acute uh, pressures on uh, liquidity, and lower level of profitability, and deteriorating uh, capital levels. So the return on assets uh, dropped uh, to 1% from 1.4%, and the non-performing loans, the stage uh, three loans to total loans, uh, increased to 11.3% from 7.6% in the year before. And the capital adequacy uh, fell to 15.3% from 17.9% in the year before. And the credit growth fell to 5.7% uh, from 14.5% in the year before. So this economic crisis um, led to uh, severe hardships to uh, individuals and businesses. Let me share some uh, indicators of uh, the suffering that people and the businesses have to endure. So um, if you take the, the incre price increases in the consumer goods categories, the gas prices, for instance, recorded over 240% rise, and the fuel uh, for personal transport ro rose over 207%. And the uh, bakery products, uh, bread, uh, these items increased by over 183% in August. So certain months recorded uh, three-digit rises in, in price levels. And also the cost of production uh, soared. Therefore, uh, the businesses have to uh, bear uh, negative returns with uh, very high uh, inflation. The public sector, the real wage, for instance, fell by 20.6%. The formal private sector real wages fell by 22.7%, and the informal private sector real wage fell by 17.5%. Uh, in the meantime, the, uh, the, the national poverty line increased uh, over 70% uh, by end of last year, 
and that halted the, uh, the progress that Sri Lanka has been making uh, to address vulnerabilities of the uh, 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 some segments of the society, the scarcity of essential items uh, amidst dearth of foreign exchange liquidity caused significant uh, social suffering. Some uh, essentials like pharmaceuticals, fuel, uh, petroleum, gas, food items, and some other industrial raw material, there were huge uh, shortages. So the severe economic hardships led to both uh, public anxiety and uh, political upheaval. So uh, this situation warranted uh, credible and transparent policy measures to prevent further worsening of the crisis, which helped uh, revive the uh, socio-economic uh, stability. Uh, let me start with what the central bank did uh, last year. Uh, central bank adopted aggressive monetary policy tightening in April last year to rein in uh, demand pressures, complemented by a robust communication strategy aimed at anchoring inflation expectations, while taking measures to stabilize the exchange rate amidst exhausted levels of usable reserves and preserve financial system stability. So uh, the mounting inflationary pressures warranted the shift and sizable policy intervention to ensure economic and price stability. We wanted to uh, extend the tight monetary policy stance that was uh, commenced in August uh, 2021 uh, that is due to uh, the pressures that we saw on the inflation front to contain the rising price pressures and also to unwind the lagged impact of uh, accommodative monetary policy measures adopted during the pandemic period to uh, contain the de-anchoring of uh, inflation expectations and reduce the magnitude of uh, negative uh, real uh, interest rates and also to address the external sector imbalances and correct anomalies in the interest rate structure due to the rise in uh, government security sales compared to the other market interest rates. Therefore, uh, the central bank increased policy interest, interest rates by 950 basis points in 2022, uh, following uh, which another 100 basis point uh, in March this year. And the statutory reserve uh, ratio was raised by two uh, percentage points in September 2021. And we also removed the, the maximum uh, interest rates uh, that were in place uh, during um, the pe this period. So overall, the monetary policy uh, stance was tightened and uh, it was maintained through um, thus far during 2023. Uh, in response to tight monetary policy stance, Market interest rates rose uh, notably within a span of a few months. As you can see here, the, all the interest rates uh, started moving upward. And the one which is on top is the government uh, securities yields, 91-day uh, T-bill rate. And that surge in uh, government securities yields was also due to the risk premia attached to uh, with the debt restructuring concerns that were there. And the large and persistent liquidity deficit in the domestic money market was also a factor which is behind the rise in the interest rates. In fact, the liquidity deficit in the domestic money market uh, was allowed uh, because uh, to support the tight uh, monetary policy stance, as you can see here in this chart, from uh, October uh, in 2021, the deficit has started to widen and by April last year, the money market deficit was the largest, around 700 billion rupees. But gradually, that tightness in the monetary conditions uh, started easing because of the measures the central bank uh, introduced to, um, correct, to uh, make a correction in the large overshooting of the interest rate structure. And some of the measures the central bank adopted included uh, the uh, the large uh, volume of market interventions, including term uh, reverse repo auctions, and also the uh, imposing of restrictions on standing facilities, the limiting uh, standing deposit facility access and the uh, standing lending facility access. And also central bank introduced the liquidity assistance facility while uh, strengthening the emergency lending assistance. On the external front, um, we saw the trade deficit was widening. As you can see here, the yellow area is the imports 
which uh, started to accelerate uh, from late 2021, and that trend continued while the exports were moderating. So that uh, exerted a lot of pressures in the domestic uh, foreign exchange market, which warranted uh, urgent measures to address those um, uh, heightening balance of payment pressures. So the monetary policy tightening was one uh, policy measure that was helping to curtail overall demand. In addition to that, the central bank introduced uh, certain other restrict restrictions measures on the uh, imposing of marginal requirements on the one hand, while the government uh, imposed restrictions on certain uh, identified uh, import categories, uh, including temporary suspension or, and also the uh, overall ban of uh, some categories like uh, vehicle imports. And also the central bank established a mechanism to uh, monitor export proceeds repatriation and also introduce measures to uh, ensure the, uh, the residual of export proceeds is converted uh, in the domestic uh, banking system. In addition, the central bank introduced some other measures to promote uh, workers' remittances through uh, additional incentive schemes, reimbursing uh, the transaction costs, and introducing uh, the uh, mobile applications called Lanka Remit, and also some duty uh, concessions uh, when uh, vehicles are imported, electric vehicles are imported by using the money remitted by workers uh, overseas. Uh, and also the, some capital flow measures were uh, in place to manage forex outflows uh, both in 2021 as well as in 2022 and that included limits on outward remittances through uh, an outward investment account, and also a limit uh, outward remittances on capital transactions, uh, also limiting the repatriation of funds under the migration allowance, and also the limit on outward remittances, issuance of foreign exchange for any Sri Lankan individual who has obtained temporary residence visa. So that helped to uh, cur curtail some of the forex outflows uh, out of the country. Also, uh, the measures were taken to uh, safeguard the official reserves while providing forex to the financial uh, to finance essential imports. Uh, as you can see here in this table, Central Bank has absorbed a sizable amount of forex from the market by way of workers' remittances related absorption and export proceeds uh, related uh, absorption, uh, and also some small amounts due to financing for fuel bills and financing for coal bills. Uh, while absorbing 2.1 billion from the market, Central Bank has in fact supplied back to the market of 2.7 billion to finance uh, mainly uh, fuel imports and coal and other essential imports. In the meantime, uh, the bilateral um, uh, partners and multilateral partners uh, extended some support for Sri Lanka. Uh, some of the uh, important ones to highlight are the, uh, the humanitarian credit lines uh, from India uh, to import uh, fuel, fertilizer, and medicine, and also the bilateral uh, SOP facilities with uh, regional central banks, including the Reserve Bank of India and the uh, Bank of Bangladesh, in addition to the existing uh, SOP facility with the People's Bank of China. Also, we have utilized the, uh, the proceeds from the Asian uh, Clearing Union for uh, debt servicing and import financing requirements, while we uh, got some support from the World Bank as well as the uh, Asian Development Bank to face this uh, severe balance of payment pressures during last year. In the meantime, the central bank uh, commenced uh, providing market guidance to stabilize the exchange rate. As you can see here, the exchange rate uh, shot up from around 200 rupees a dollar level uh, late 2021 to uh, 363 uh, dollars, uh, rupees a dollar by uh, end of last year. And from, um, from uh, mid-May, the central banks commenced giving uh, market guidance so that, as you can see here, the rate stabilized at that level. 
before uh, the recent measures uh, sort of uh, helped us some appreciation of the uh, uh, of the rupee and uh, with the depreciation of the nominal exchange rate we saw the real um, effective exchange rate also um, depreciating with which helped us to uh, improve the export competitiveness while uh, discouraging non uh, urgent uh, imports on the financial sector central bank adopted several uh, prudential policy uh, measures including the issuance of regulations and strengthening the supervisory approach to maintain the resilience of the financial sector so some of the measures included the permission to draw down on the capital conservation buffer a reduction of regulatory uh, minimum requirements of the liquidity coverage ratio and the net uh, stable funding ratio and the permission granted to stagger the mark to market losses uh, on government securities over two years and the extension of the deadlines to meet the minimum capital requirements and the required uh, documentation requirements plus restrictions on uh, discretionary payments so the stability of the financial sector was maintained uh, despite the looming challenges uh, arising from continuously declining uh, credit quality uh, acute pressures on uh, liquidity low levels of uh, profitability due to high uh, impairments and the deteriorating capital buffers to absorb uh, unexpected losses so on the government side the uh, government had to front load an unparalleled set of fiscal reforms to face the crisis and to regain confidence uh, and stability and uh, in early last year the government initiated measures to seek uh, assistance from the imf and also uh, in mid april the government announced a debt standstill on selected external debt service payments the uh, the set of measures that the government embarked on last year included the, the revenue enhancing measures as well as expenditure rationalization measures on the revenue front the various measures were initiated including the revisions of the vat rate and the vat base and some one time uh, tax measures like a surcharge tax of 25% and some uh, other tax measures like uh, reintroducing the withholding tax and the removal of uh, vat exemptions and the revisions to excise uh, duties on petrol uh, diesel uh, cigarettes and liquor Uh, on the expenditure front uh, the guidelines were issued uh, to minimize electricity and fuel usage also guidelines were issued to the public sector to restrict uh, non urgent uh, non essential expenses and some other reforms including um, fuel price revisions um, soi restructuring um, and the um, the amend in the uh, sri lanka electricity uh, act uh, to, to mention a few and also the government uh, sort of uh, noticed that the initial budget estimates that were presented in 2021 for 2022 were little difficult to achieve therefore in september the government uh, revised the budget budget estimate for 2022 and um, hence the government revenue target was brought down from 12% to 8.8% and the government expenditure uh, was uh, cut down from 20 0.8% to 18.6% and the primary deficit uh, however rose to 4% from 2.8% and the overall fiscal deficit also increased to from 8.8 to 9.9%. These were only the revised estimates but the actuals were a little different to uh, the the revised budget estimates uh, as well. and one other key development that took place in last year was the um, debt standstill which was announced in on the 12th of april by the government because as you can see here the credit rating agencies were downgraded in sri lanka in uh, in sort of uh, consistent way uh, smp fish and moody's were all downgrading from 2019 in levels to um, in 2021 triple c level and 2022 and uh, after the distancing almost selective default and restricted default default and that was mainly due to the uh, the lack of access uh, to foreign financing as well as the uh, government revenue uh, shortfall which prevented the, the government from uh, servicing its uh, its debt 
So, so from the April debt announcement, the actual government was able to save a uh, sizable amount of foreign um, exchange, uh, about 2.8 billion from April to December, otherwise would have been uh, paid from, from reserves. And also the, uh, the SOE sector, the, mainly the, the energy prices were, were revised. Uh, the, center, the, the CPC, for instance, revised uh, the petroleum prices on multiple times. In certain categories, uh, we have seen an increase of about, about 166% uh, petrol, for instance. And diesel, the increase was over 280%. Uh, and the super diesel, the increase was 227%. Uh, uh, so this helped, uh, on the one hand, to improve the cash flow operations of the uh, Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, and on the other hand, to ease pressures on the government because of large losses, these uh, major soils uh, um, continue to incur over, over, over years. And further measures were taken, taken to improve uh, financial viability of SOEs. So one of such measures is the, to uh, take over some of the large debt of these uh, SOEs. For instance, CPC had a foreign debt uh, uh, outstanding of 2.5 billion, which was transferred to the central government end of last year. And the CEB's liabilities of over 146 billion it was also transferred to the central government uh, end, of, uh, end of last year. So let's take a look at uh, what the what of outcomes of these policy measures uh, are making uh, during the towards the later part of last year and uh, this thus far during this year. And overall, the economy was able to achieve a workable sort of equilibrium until the assistance from the uh, international financial institutions like the IMF and the World Bank began to materialize. So if we take a counterfactual of uh, the corrective policy measures were costly and painful because we know the rise of interest rates and the tightening of fiscal measures, mainly in terms of tax, tax, tax measures. So they were necessary uh, in the near term to overcome the crisis from uh, worsening further. And um, if you take headline inflation, for instance, September it was uh, peaking at 70%, but if we haven't taken measures to tighten monetary conditions further, it have been continuing to increase beyond 70% level. And the exchange rate was depreciating from 200 dollars, rupees to dollar level to 363 uh, rupees. But if we hadn't taken measures to contain the depreciation, it have been depreciated even uh, by large amount. And on the economy, the contraction was uh, contained at 7.8%, but as you know, some of the, um, we, can, we saw the forecast for Sri Lankan economy by some of these international financial institutions, more than 9%. Um, so we managed to limit the contraction to 7.8% with, uh, with measures taken. So these measures were costly, uh, but they were necessary to manage the crisis. We have seen the impact of these tight monetary conditions with the continuous fall in inflation from 70% level last year up until now. There's a significant downward adjustment in the inflation rate to 35% in uh, April uh, this year. That was mainly supported by the easing uh, inflation of uh, food inflation and uh, energy inflation, these uh, yellow and green bars. And also you can see the, um, the core inflation, which has the underlying, the measure of underlying inflation has also eased significantly from 50.2% to 27.8% in uh, April. Food inflation in particular has decelerated to 30% from 95% back in September last year. So uh, the, the high interest rate environment, in fact, dampen the expansion of credit to the private sector and the state-owned uh, business enterprises. As you can see, the, the yellow lines reflect the credit to the private sector, which shows a contraction from June last year up until now, February. 
and the credit to the SOE sector was so moderated, as you can see here, the second chart, uh, to, to uh, low levels compared to what it was. However, uh, net uh, credit to the government, NCG, remained high, reflecting the cash flow pressures of the government under the debt standstill. We can see the NCG expanding uh, at high level uh, during, during last, last year. So despite the elevated uh, levels of net credit to the government, monetary expansion actually slowed, driven mainly by the significant contraction of credit to the private sector and the decline in net foreign assets of the banking sector. You can see the decline in net foreign assets, the yellow bars, which were negative and were large negative by April last year, which has come down uh, to some level uh, by, by now, February last year. And the uh, private sector credit, which is the, um, the green bars, uh, are also showing downward adjustment, which helped us to have uh, low growth uh, in broad, uh, broad money, which was at 15.4%. That is including the impact of the depreciation, but without that, the number would have been even lower. On the external front, we are seeing uh, the outcome, positive outcomes that we were envisaging uh, because the uh, imports started uh, declining with the tightening uh, of policy measures, including monetary policy tightening and other restrictions uh, uh, that were in place. But exports were holding up, uh, supporting the balance of payments a great deal. But uh, the trade deficit uh, has come down significantly. If you you see the, the chart on the right, significantly lower levels of around 300 million uh, a month. The overall uh, imports fell by 11.4% uh, from 20 billion to 18.2 billion, and exports increased by 5% last year from 12.5 billion to 13.1 billion. Uh, Again, as you, as you are aware now, we've managed to secure the EFF, or Extended Fund Facility, from the uh, IMF with the board approval in March. Um, and that is coming in billion overall uh, facility, which will be dispersed in nine tranches, and we got the first tranche in March. And also there are some actions that we need to do. So we've uh, completed all prior actions, in total nine, but there are 18 structural benchmarks that are, again, public information. And we have to meet four quantity performance criteria. Uh, and there are four uh, indicative targets. And there's one monetary policy consultation clause to bring down inflation uh, to single digit level by end of this year. Uh, gross official reserves uh, are showing an improvement uh, with these measures taken. While the exchange rate has been allowed to be determined by the market forces, so reserves which were at 1.7 billion October last year rose to 1.9 billion end of last year and increased further to 2.8 billion end of April. And the, um, so far this year, this, we have received some inflows uh, to the balance of payments, including. 250 million during the first four months to the government securities market. And we have been able to absorb over 1 billion from the market uh, during the first uh, four months of this year, in addition to the IMF uh, first tranche of uh, over 330 million. Meanwhile, workers' remittances continue to um, increase from around 200 month level to over half a billion level by, by now, by March. So overall, last year, workers' remittances were at 3.7, 3.8 billion. Now, so far this year, we've been able to have achieved 1.4 billion of workers' remittances. And tourism earnings, as you can see here, continues to rise. Um, last year, it was about 1.1 billion. And so far this year, we've been able to achieve over half a billion during the uh, first quarter. And the tourist arrivals averaged over 110,000 uh, a month compared to 60,000 a month uh, during, during last year. On the government uh, sector developments, the, the, the corrective policy measures have 
helped uh, somewhat to contain the deterioration of the fiscal sector performance because the current account deficit of the government, which is showing the savings, uh, fell to 6.4% uh, from 7.3% year before, and the primary deficit uh, improved to 3.7% from 5.7% in the year before, and the fiscal deficit also improved to 10.2% uh, from 11.7%, but there's a long way to uh, go about this uh, fiscal consolidation in terms of bringing down the fiscal deficit to about 5% uh, of GDP level in the uh, next three uh, to uh, five years. And one other key uh, development that took place last year was the, the interest and the capital repayment, the domestic debt service, which has in increased significantly due to the rise in um, interest rates as well as the the uh, domestic borrowing because of the lack of foreign financing. So the overall debt service payments, domestic, domestic debt service payments rose to uh, 2.5 trillion last year from 1.6 trillion in the year before, but foreign debt service payments uh, decreased to uh, just below half a trillion in last year from 786 billion in the year uh, before. We are also seeing some improvements on the SOE sector because uh, of the uh, price revisions that were in effect, both uh, the petroleum prices and the electricity tariffs. So CPC continues to record profits um, uh, on a monthly basis from July last year, along with the price uh, adjustments and gradual stabilization of the exchange rate. And the CEB, the operating loss of CEB has moderated since uh, August last year, partly due to the cash flow improvements along with the upward revisions to electricity tariffs. And the debt burden of CPC has come down from 3.4 billion to 0.2 billion by end of last year. And the CEB's debt liability has come down to 346 billion rupees from 541 billion uh, rupees end of uh, 2021. And there are other reforms that are in place, including the cost reflective pricing formula and the um, we allow in private participation in the petroleum sector uh, and the com so that we can improve the comp competition in the domestic petroleum market. And the, in the electricity sector, we are seeing uh, the measures to restructure Ceylon Electricity Board and also uh, the Electricity Act uh, 2009 was amended in June last year to allow more participation to uh, small scale uh, power generate uh, uh, producers and also the semi-annual cost recovery based electricity tariff adjustment is in place so we will see uh, some revisions in the period ahead. Hopefully some downward revision in the next, uh, next round of revision. Uh, meanwhile the government uh, strengthened the existing safety net programs uh, aimed at enhancing the socioeconomic well-being of vulnerable households. You can see the government has committed to have a, at least some level of spending on um, social welfare. Last year it was 120 billion and government has increased the Samurdi uh, payments by 28 uh, percent last year and the emergency cash grants program, cash transfer program rather of 300 to 5,000 uh, 3,000 to 5,000 rupees with the help of uh, World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. So the, and the government uh, is also trying to establish the social registry under the Leave No One Behind program, which is more efficient uh, with better targeting and better uh, efficient distribution uh, system. So all in all, uh, that in a way a summary of what has happened thus far so if we look, uh, take a medium term uh, um, outlook, we, are, we have published in the annual report some policy based medium term outlook, assuming that the IMF EFF program will, be, uh, will continue successfully and also the debt restructuring process will be completed uh, during this year, hopefully uh, before uh, September this year. Thereby we can unlock further assistance from uh, international uh, financial institutions. So if you take the outlook for inflation, so we are seeing inflation is coming down pretty fast with the support of the base effect 
Um, as you can see here, the bars uh, here. Having um, April, we got about 10 percentage point downward adjustment from the base effect itself because of the large increase in 2021, 2022. And also we got the momentum or month on month inflation was also negative, which supported us to a 15 percentage point reduction of inflation in April. So in May, we are expecting 8 percentage point downward adjustment just because of the base effect. And in June, we are expecting about 12 percentage point downward adjustment uh, because of the base effect. So this will help us to bring down inflation quite fast to one as a single digit level by end of the end of the year. But there are there can be risks uh, uh, to this inflation outlook, which we will have to manage as we move uh, move along. On the growth front, we are expecting uh, a lower contraction this year from 7.8 percent last year to about 2 percent um, contraction this year. Because first half, of course, we'll have some contraction due to the, you know, uh, first quarter will have larger contraction, and second quarter will have a very small contraction. But the first half, the second half of this year, will have a positive growth in our expectations. Going forward, the 2024 will have a positive growth, and gradually we will reach the medium term uh, potential growth of above 5% uh, uh, level. With the support, of course, the investments that we are envisaging into the Colombo Port City and other investments through industrial zones and the, um, uh, so the facilitation from the BOI and all. Um, on the external sector outlook, we are uh, sort of uh, projecting a mild uh, trade gap, uh, trade deficit uh, going forward, about 6% uh, of GDP with the support of uh, the increase in exports and some uh, moderation uh, of uh, moderate growth of uh, import expenditure as countries uh, again opening up for, for imports. So overall, the current account balance will be maintained at sustainable level of below 2% uh, uh, of GDP, which will uh, be maintained uh, over the, over the medium, medium term. On the fiscal front, there are improvements expected with the measures that have been already taken because the revenue is expected to rise to about 15% from 8.3% uh, in last year, while expenditure will be maintained at below 20% of GDP with uh, all the measures that were in place. Hence, the, the key fiscal balances will have an improvement overall the budget deficit will come down from 10.8 to above below 5% level back in 2027. And a key improvement that we are expecting is the primary balance, or the deficit rather that we saw last year about 3.7%, and small deficit this year about 0.7% will have a surplus uh, from 2024 uh, onwards with the measures that are, that are in place under the IMF, uh, EFF uh, arrangement. Uh, on the Debt sustainability, we have uh, targets to be achieved um, in uh, debt restructuring process so that the, the gross financing needs of the government will come down to 13% of GDP on average during 2027 and 2032 uh, period. And the foreign currency debt servicing of the central government will also be maintained below 4.5% uh, of uh, GDP in any year during this period. And the overall public debt will come down below 95% of GDP by 2032. So that basically wraps up the uh, the overall uh, the, the sort of um, the content of the annual report. And also we have the uh, box articles that we have uh, sele on, on selected topics covering the disinflation process and the new the Central Bank Act and the IFF, EFF arrangement, and the rebasing of GDP and rebasing of um, consumer prices, and monitoring of export proceeds, repatriation, conversions, the post-debt restructuring uh, policy priorities for strengthening the external sector. So likewise, uh, we are covering um, uh, the main areas that are in the eight chapters uh, in the annual report. And in addition, 
as we've uh, done in the past, we have a long list of uh, issues and policies um, that we've been recommending for the government and the policymakers th through, through years, uh, comprising all, all sectors uh, of the economy. And I'm not going to go through um, each of them uh, because of the time, time limitation. Um, let me, before uh, I wind up my presentation, um, let me uh, take a couple of minutes uh, to um, uh, express my sincere uh, gratitude for the people who um, helped us to uh, complete this uh, annual report um, under challenging circumstances. So the, the publication of the annual report is a collective work uh, contributed by many uh, parties and individuals within the within and outside the central bank. So I would like to take this uh, opportunity to um, express my gratitude to the invaluable support uh, given to us by uh, all the parties uh, to make this publication a success. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Governor and the, the members of the monetary board for continued guidance and encouragement in preparing this report and finalizing it on, on time. The liberty given uh, by the governor and the members of the monetary board and the senior management um, in writing this report was instrumental to convey the historic uh, economic story of Sri Lanka last year. I'm grateful to the senior management uh, of the central bank, deputy governors, assistant governors for uh, valuable comments and suggestions in finalizing this report. I would also like to thank all the heads of department uh, of the central bank and their staff for uh, supporting us in all possible ways uh, in helping us to get out this, out this publication uh, on time. And also I'm grateful for all the government institutions, agencies and regulatory and corporate bodies, banking and non-banking uh, sector institutions for all the stakeholders, including the printing press for all means of engagement including timely data provision and other logistic support without which this publication wouldn't have been a success. Last but not least, I turn, I turn to a special group of people for whom I am greatly indebted and that is the staff of the Economic Research Department who have sacrificed so much uh, to get this uh, task done on time. And I want to express uh, special gratitude to um, Dr. Kasun Patirige and his uh, team for compiling this presentation today with a lot of patience and, and commitment. And I would like to thank Director CBS for, for arranging this uh, public seminar. And also I would like to thank uh, all the family members of the research department who have um, tolerated a lot of um, um, difficulties during, this, uh, during these difficult times. So with that, I wind up my presentation and thank you all for, for your patience. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Harishandra, for that uh, comprehensive and informative presentation on economic circumstances the country is dealing with right now. Uh, now it's time to accommodate uh, questions from the audience, so, so you can indicate uh, the same by raising your hand, so we can facilitate. Now it's time for questions. Uh, thank yeah. you, Dr. Harish. I think uh, open up for question and uh, answers, comments, I think we would appreciate uh, questions, clarifications, and if there are any comments, very brief, uh, because we need to give uh, opportunities to everyone who would like to ask questions and comments, please. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, I'm a journalist from the Island newspaper. Governor, the uh, economic activity is very low at MSME level because of high interest rates. How soon do you think you can fix this? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, what you can, what, what is most important is the inflation. 
uh, which is coming down um, faster than we expected. With that, uh, with, we also see interest rates from the peak uh, easing down, uh, especially after we announce this, uh, uh, the complete debt to stock policy, we think uh, especially uh, the market interest rates will come down faster so that I, we are hoping in the second half, interest rates uh, would be normalized in line with our inflation uh, expectations uh, prediction, which is uh, single digit uh, by end of uh, towards the uh, end of uh, uh, fourth quarter this year. It seems like there are no uh, other questions. Uh, I think the, finally I would like to make a small statement on this. Uh, the, I think we have assured the uh, uh, finance system's ability as we always have been uh, maintaining. Uh, especially there are a lot of uh, circulation stories going around that uh, stability of the public deposits and banks and system stability. We from the central bank, our key objective, one of the key objectives is to maintain finance systems banking system stability, we will ensure any kind of uh, domestic debt op optimization, we will uh, ensure safeguard of the banking system stability as well as the protection of uh, public deposits. That I just want to make that statement. And also, I think if you can see um, yesterday, Sri Lankan Banking Association also uh, confirmed uh, on the basis of assurance that we are given. So with that, let me... Uh, Conclude and thank uh, everyone, uh, including uh, Director Research and his team uh, for uh, making this, uh, uh, making very good presentation and also uh, uh, having an opportunity to uh, explain to the public. Thank you very much. Much, Governor. Um,